If you turn your Bibles to Genesis, I'm in Genesis, the fourth chapter, and what's called in the Hebrew Bible, the Toledoth or the first Toledoth. It covers the second chapter, verse four, through the fourth chapter, the end of the chapter, fourth chapter. I'm going to look today at verses five, six, and seven, so that we might understand how the Hebrew paints a picture of what Cain did to his brother and why he did it. Cain, the firstborn of Adam and Eve, became the first murderer in human history. He murdered his own brother, Abel. So in this account, it reads this way, for Cain and for his offering, he had no regard. God had no regard. So Cain became very angry and his countenance fell. We would say today when the countenance fall, we would say it was heavy body language. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you so angry? And why has your countenance fallen? He said, if you do well, do the right thing that God tells you to do, will not your countenance be lifted up? See, that's a human spirit idea. That if you do not do well, in other words, go against the will of God, sin, watch this now, sin is crouching at the door and its desire is for you, but you must master it. In verse 8, Cain told Abel his brother, and it came about when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Now you missed it. So I, I'm just going to read the last two because you missed it. Listen, he said, sin is crouching at the door and its desire is for you, but you must master it. <clears throat> Cain told Abel, his brother, and it came about when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Now here's a man who understood the will of God, was disobedient to it in an offering. He was supposed to bring an offering, a blood offering for sin, and he brought a fruit offering. He brought a different offering. That wasn't going to do it. God tells him, you made, a bad, you made a bad choice. Go back and make a good one. You didn't do it right the first time. Go back and do it right the second time. See, that's, that's what he means here when he said, if you do well, if you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, then you got, a, you, got, you got a bigger problem coming. All right? If you do the will of God, what you know in your heart is the will of God. If you do the will of God, things are going to go well for you, right? And if you don't, things are not going to go well for you. Is that not what he said? Mm -hmm. Let's have a word of prayer. We're going to have to do business here today. Uh, maybe you came to Bible. Maybe you come to church to have a little Bible study. Maybe you came because you were coerced, or there are a thousand and one reasons why you wind up here today. The, but the reason you're here today is to listen to this message because it's, it's for you. It's not for the person sitting next to you. It's for you personally. And you need to get it. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we look at a subject matter here in the Hebrew pictured called the wild beast of anger. My, the wild beast of anger. 
and drove a young man that came from a nice home, a nice community, and everything going good. And wound up murdering his brother and being exiled or put in prison for life. Ma, ma, ma. How could that possibly happen? Well, he said, sin is crouching at the door. It'll either master you or you will master it. Be the wise person. Master it. I pray, Father, you would teach us this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll notice up at the top, that's just an introduction to you. A lot of times I will give you the greater context to a text. I will show you, uh, give you an outline that you can actually teach a Bible study from. And so I've done that for you. The greater context for our subject matter today is Genesis, the fourth chapter, 4 through 16. I made five points for you. Make sure it's written this way because I read mine and it wasn't. So be sure you got, they're all C words. That's homiletical. All right, they're all C words. There are five of them. The first word is countenance changed by, write this down, by sin. A countenance, a person's countenance can be changed by sin. How about that? It, and countenance can be lifted up or fallen down. A crouching sin. What in the world would a crouching sin be? We'll explain that today. A crouching, you can do well with it. A crouching sin at the door. You can do well if you master it. You will not do well if you don't master it, right? A crouching sin. In verse 7, there's a craving desire. You can have a craving desire for the will of God or a craving desire for self-gratifying will. But you have a craving desire. It can be towards sin or towards God. You're the captain of that ship. You can, direct, you can direct it towards sin or you can direct it towards the Lord. You're in charge of the ship. There's a choice, write this down, a, a choice to sin. I put the word choice just right to sin. A choice to sin. In verse 7, if you do well, positive volition, that PV is positive volition. Do well, positive volition towards the will of God. The will of God told him exactly what doing well meant. It meant to bring me a blood offering for sin. Bring me a blood offering for sin. If you, if, if you make the right choice, you do well. If you do not make the right choice, go negative to God's will, then you're in trouble. Boy, you need to understand this. But this is life. This is life. This is how you live your life. There's a consequence of sin. Write that down. Consequence. I wrote the word consequence, but it's a consequence of sin. All of this is dealing with sin. There's a consequence to sin, and it's a terrible one. In the fourth chapter, verses 8 through 16, Cain wouldn't listen. He didn't listen when God told him the right what to do as far as an offering. He didn't listen uh, afterwards when he told him, "Bring me, listen, look, you made you made a bad choice. Correct it and bring me the correct sin offering, and everything will be okay." He wouldn't do it. His brother was a reminder of what he had failed to do, and so he murdered him. Couldn't murder God. Couldn't find him. Right, murdered next next best thing as Abel. Uh, so the consequences: sin became angry. Listen, it's one thing to when when the Bible talks about angry, he's not talking about mad. He's not talking about you're mad. When he talks about angry, he's talking about 
a fire that's been lit and is out is getting out of control. And you get it, need to get it in control. When man goes to anger, it's a fire that's starting to spread. And boy, you better get a hold of it or it's going to burn down everything you got in the neighborhood. We out here in Moody understand that, don't we? Huh? I, I smelled everything but garbage. You know, I smelled smoke all the time out here. So Cain became very angry. He got mad, let man become anger. That's a fire, that's, that's the fire spreading and wouldn't check it. Wouldn't, wouldn't confess it as a sin and get it back in control. How would he do that? What does God's will say about the sin you're about to do? What's God's will? Bring a blood offering, bring a blood offering. Why are you getting so angry about this? I just said, bring me a blood offering. This whole thing would be okay. He wouldn't do it. And so a second idea here, why are you so angry? And his countenance fell. Cain, Cain became so angry as to murder. Now you sit here today, and you probably never think I would ever do anything like that. But you don't know how to check mad. And so you became angry. You've got to learn how to... You've got to learn how to check mad as well as check anger in your life. You've got to know how to do that. You've got to learn how to do that because it is mastering your life. It's the master of your life. The sin of anger. And I'll tell you, once, it get, once mad turns into anger, anger can turn you into a nightmare. My guy gets in his car in the morning. He's running late. He's had a fuss with his wife and his kids. He jumps in a car. He's already mad. He's going down the highway a little bit too fast. He's doing this and doing that. And all of a sudden, somebody cuts him off, and he gets angry. And he's just, that anger is starting to boil and, boil and spread. First thing you know, the other guy, don't know why he's on his tail. And so they're, all of a sudden they're pulled over to the side of the road and they're going to settle it like men, except one guy's got a gun. And so he shoots him. They didn't set out that day to do that. But you see, he had a sin crouching at his door in his life and never addressed it. He could go from mad to anger in a split second and he could get nuttier than a fruitcake. And God brought great judgment on him over the, over the murder. Verses 11 through 13. Do you know the saddest part to that is in verse 16. In the fourth chapter, verse 16, it some, says some words that you never want to hear from God. Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. Can you imagine that? Could you imagine one hour of your day without being able to step into the presence of an almighty God to help you and rescue you and secure. Could you imagine that if your child all of a sudden was rushed to an emergency war room and, and you didn't know if they were going to make it and you don't have access to the presence of God? Do you have any idea how bad that would be? The problem is much of you don't, a lot of you don't know the difference to being in the presence of God and being not in the presence of God. You and I will never hear these words because of, of Hebrews, the 13th chapter, when God said, I will never leave you in Christ. If you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are in Christ, in Christ, God never forsakes he forsook him on the cross and he'll never forsake him again. And if you're in him, you're in the unforsaken one, right? 
He will never leave you nor forsake you. You will never hear those words that Cain, when Cain heard him, he said, how am I going to live without that? I, how am I going to ever possibly live without it? We'll talk about that in days to come. In verse 14, God told him, from your face I will be hidden. Think about that, 14 and 15. So let me talk about a few things before halftime. We'll go get a cup of coffee and have a donut, and then we'll have a second half that probably some of you come for. It's interesting in the Bible that Cain is an interesting guy. He's mentioned four times in the Bible and well worth a read. I put it on your paper. I'm not going to read it today to you because it's for you to read. In Genesis 4, of course. In Genesis 4, in 26 verses, he's listed 16 times. In all the rest of the Bible, he's only mentioned three. They're well worth your read, though. In Hebrews 11, 4, 1 John 3, 11 and 12, and Jude 10 and 11. A good read for you. Cain is mentioned, and always mentioned in a bad light, kind of like Judas Iscariot. He is mentioned as a first human being to murder another human being out of uncontrolled anger. Cain was of the evil one, the Bible says. For this is a message which we have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the evil one, the devil, and slew his brother. And what was his motive? For what reason did he slay him? Because, reason or motive, his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. How about that? He murdered his brother over the brother's relationship with God that he could have, but he didn't want to do it God's way. I want to come to God my way. There's no such thing. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Cain didn't want to do that. He wanted to come his own way. I meet a lot of people <coughs> that are like that. But listen, <coughs> we're a nation right now that wants to see motive in everything. Listen, you know when you can't see it? <coughs> when it's evil. Evil has no sensible motive. See, when we ask for motive, we're looking for some, something that's reasonable. <coughs> There's no such thing in evil. You know what we do in America today? Listen to what we would do in America today. This is, this is America 101 today. We would blame Abel and God. We would never blame Cain. You know why? You know why he would do that and why he did do it? Because he was evil. He, he, not, not in his nature, but in his mind, he had bought into Cosmos Diabolica's evil thinking of the world, which Satan controls, 1 John 5, 18 and 19. When the Bible talks about Abel, it says, by faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain. What was Abel's offering? Blood offering. That's what God requested. Through which Abel obtained the testimony that he was righteous. God testing about his gift and through faith. Watch this. Watch this now because you're going to miss this. Though he is dead, Still what? Speaks. Though he is what? Dead. Dead still. Speaks. Isn't that interesting? Righteousness in God that comes through Christ. 
goes way beyond your grave. The righteous deeds that you do for God is one of the strongest legacies you could ever leave about your life to this world. Do you hear that in this? Do you not see that? How is it you don't see that? I'm going to read it again. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice, the will of God, through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous. How did he, how did he, how did he obtain the testimony? Obedience. Obedience to the will of God. He gave the offering God asked both men to bring. God testified, God testified about his gift, and through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. It is your legacy, your life in Christ, obedient by faith. You walk by faith, not by <coughs> sight. Gain walking by sight. Got no testimony. It's all negative. Cain walked by sight. His testimony speaks on, doesn't it? Here we are in 2023, and Abel is speaking to us. What a legacy. You want to leave a legacy? This is better than having a street named after you or a library. Point number two. You would notice that the title of my lesson came from our Genesis 4, 5 through 8. I want to tell you five things that you might miss, so I've listed them, <laughs> so you might understand them. He said that sin crouches at the door. Sin. I gave you the Hebrew word, chata, and it is substituting human good in place of the blood offering of Christ, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what he did. He brought a fruit, he brought a fruit bowl, and God wanted a blood bowl. Wanted a bowl of blood. And it says his crouching. What's interesting, this is in the Hebrew, this is a cal participle. See that? That's a participle. That PTC means participle. In the Hebrew, they use the participle to paint pictures. You always pay attention to them in the Hebrew. So this is what he's done. They've got, he's got sin crouching at the door. This word for crouching as a participle is trying to paint a picture of a wild beast ready to spring on the prey. Crouching at the door is a wild animal, hungry, ready to pounce on Cain's door. As soon as Cain opens that door, he's going to pounce on him. This, and listen, he's not, he's not going to be like the mother cat that catches something and teaches the little ones how to catch mice. No, he's there to have a meal. He's got to eat them right down to the bone. Watch this now. Go to 1 Peter with me. Let me show you what this, is, what this is about, Peter's description of it. In 1 Peter 5, 8. Watch this now. Be of sober spirit. Be of a sound mind in the word of God. Be on the alert. Always, always be, but you know, we tell, if you've got a woman in your life, whether it's a daughter or a grandmother or a mother, if it gets dark out, you tell them, make sure you park in a safe place where it's well lit. you always look around you coming and going, right? We, we do that stuff, don't we? My, 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 my. Well, fine. See that? Be of sober mind be, and be alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring, roaring lion, seeking someone to what? See, that's what this picture is in the Old Testament. This is exactly the picture in the Old Testament. We've got sin. That's Satan's bait. Baiting you out of the door so that when you come out, he's going to pounce on you and devour you. Do you understand that? Did he get Cain? Did he get Cain? Did he get Cain? Did Cain come from a good family? 
Huh? Love God. Huh? Think he can't get you? You think he can't get you? Huh? Huh. Well, that'd be interesting to think about that. At the door, what's that mean? Well, in the picture, you know, it's the, he's on the outside of the house, you're on the inside, right? He can't open the door from the outside and, get, and go in and get you. He has to wait for you to what? Open the door and come out. You've got to open the door to him for him to pounce on you. That's negative volition to God and positive volition to the devil. You know, Little Red Riding Hood, you know that story? Oh, what big teeth you have. I know, they're growing. This is the kind of stuff we're in. Listen, sin is crouching at a door and has a desire. Has a desire. Has a desire for you. Has a desire for you. That sin is like a roaring lion. When you open the door to Satan, he'll pounce on you and devour you. That's his intent. He's not going to you know, just nibble on you a little bit and go like, well, I'll come, we'll play tomorrow again. I mean, he's after a meal. His desire is for you. His desire is for you. You must master it. Watch this. You must master it. That's a cal imperfect. You must master it. That's a choice. You can open the door. Listen, you've got the power of the door. You can open the door. You're going to leave it shut. But you must master it. Rule over the sin of anger in the story. I gave you passages that you should read. Like Galatians 5, 16, 17, that talks about the desire is lust. The lust of the flesh versus the lust of the spirit. I gave you, I gave you uh, passages like 2 Corinthians 5, 7. How, is, how are they going to master it by faith? They're going to master it by faith. You've got to master it by <laughs> the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit and faith. Romans, the sixth chapter, be sure you read that. It says, you be sure you, today you read Romans, the sixth chapter, 12 to 14, where it says, do not let sin reign over your life. Do not let sin reign over your life. Right? What does that mean over your, more? it actually says over your mortal body, which is a whole nother idea. Do not obey the lust. Master it. Master it. Master it. So you need to read Romans 6, chapter 12 through 14. But he uses the word present. What he's talking about. Be sure you go positive with your volition. Present yourself to the will of God. Flow with the will of God. Don't flow against it. Nothing, when you choose to go against God's will, nothing good. Will it go well for you? Did, did it go well for anybody in this story? No, it ain't going to go well for you. Well, I think I can, I think. Don't be stupid. You, you're not going to come out of this clean. You're not going to come out clean. It takes the blood of Christ. You've got to confess it and quit it. And obey what the Bible tells you to do. That's the story here. Did I write down James 1, 14 and 15? If I didn't, you should. I can't get to 4 and 5 today, but you should. Because we're going to talk about Cain's problem was he didn't choose to do well by obeying the directive will of God regarding the blood offering. So he chose to do not do good. And I talk about this through that. Uh, point four, who was pushing Jane, uh, Cain's agenda? Satan. Yeah, Satan. See, you got to know that. Who's, who's telling you to go against the revealed will of God? I mean, who's pushing that agenda? And then point number five, while Cain's hurt and anger uh, were real, they were generated by evil thinking. I mean, he was hurt. Th that was real. He was angry. That was real. Put him in the wrong place. 
their sin, and you should have confessed them. And you should have got back with the will of God. Should have got back with the will of God. Well, you need to read that, because I'm out of time. And I, I want to give you time to fellowship with us, and then the second hour, <laughs> Willie's got some things, and Jeff. Uh, we're going to take the offering. If you're a visitor, this meal's been paid for. Uh, we thank you for coming, but we pass, this is how we do it with our church, we pass the offering. So, Father, we thank you today for these who come our way to study with us. The wild beast of anger. We must master it, and it must never master us. I pray today, Father, for the offering. I pray that we would be good stewards, not only in our giving, but in our spending, that we spend on most of it, not on ourselves, but on reaching the world for Jesus Christ as we expect him to return any time. May we be generous, not only in the offering we give to the church, but the offering we give to people out there that are in need, sometimes in our own family, sometimes in our neighborhood, uh, sometimes people we work with. We need, to be, we need to be loving, ministering people to other people's needs as well. In Jesus' name, amen.